Hello, hello, and welcome to another video from Keo Bastai. Today, I'm going to tell you these five things that you should be aware of when playing Phantom Breaker Opnia in this demo that has recently been released by Rocket Panda Games. You can get the demo on the Steam platform and it'll be available until February 28th. Alright, let's get to the first thing. Tip number one, game reference. Make a point to visit the game reference so you know all available tools. Something that the in-game reference don't tell you is that there are additional unique normals only for certain characters. For example, Yuzuha has a jumping forward heavy for a teleport attack, and Waka has a diving attack with a jumping down heavy. I recommend reviewing the Mizumi Wiki since the in-game command list don't have them listed. Tip number two, Titch Engage. If you look a bit closely, you may have noticed a gauge around the timer. This, folks, is the Titch Engage. What does it do, you may ask? Well, the Titch Engage affects attack and their damage output. The higher the Titch Engage is, the more damage a player will do. How does one go about building the Titching Gauge? As of this demo, these are the actions that builds the Titching Gauge. Walking or dashing forward. Clashing with attacks. Charging your counter burst. A guard crash occurs. And performing an invasion. What happens when the burst gauge is full? Well, Titching Mode will start. A miniature timer will appear under the tension gauge, signaling when tension mode has started. During tension mode, the burst gauge will auto fill itself to one stop, and damage output is dramatically higher. In addition, players have access to set burst, a strong unblockable attack that can easily do 30% or up to 70% damage in some circumstances. Once Titching Mode has ended, the Titching Gauge restarts to zero and players have to build the Titching Gauge again. However, every time the Titching Gauge is filled, the Titching Mode timer becomes longer. The first Titching Activation has a 6 second timer, followed by an 8 second timer, then 12, and so on. Tip number 3. Critical. Just like all fighters, Players can score a counter hit if they interrupt the opponent's attack. In Phantom Breaker, there are other ways to score a counter hit too. In Phantom Breaker, counter hits are also considered critical. The ways to score a counter hit in Phantom Breaker are punishing, air attacking, or the landing recoveries of jumps, attack at the opponent's backside, or a cross up. Hitting a knockdown opponent as an underground hit. Scoring a counter hit will definitely yield high rewards. Some of the rewards are longer hit stun, a damage boost on the attack, disabling certain recovery options, and emergency mode being disabled in the process. Tip number four, juggles. While it's easy to launch the opponent to start a juggle, oftentimes the opponent can air attack, making some juggle routes limited. However, hitting an opponent with a soft knockdown move will disable air attacking or air recovery. General moves that cause a soft knockdown are throws that launch the opponent in the air, like Mikoto and Yuzuha's grab, and attacks that underground pickup like Waka's Light Sogetsu Jin or Itsuki's Counter Burst. Besides those, then it becomes character specific like Mikoto's Light Gestrin or Itsuki's ES Fake Helix. Most juggles require a dash attack since dash attack have jump cancel while also keeping the opponent close in proximity. After the dash attack, players should do some type of air string to help keep the opponent afloat. 
The string will vary from character to character. A somewhat similar combo structure can be seen in Undernight Emberth. Be warned that attacks that normally disable air tech will not work in the corner as corner will force soft knockdown moves to be air techable. When the loop is about to approach the corner, players have to force a side switch or end the combo. Tip number five, bypassing auto guard. While Phantom Breaker has an auto guard, it doesn't have cross up protection or at least not in the first few frames. If you perform a precise cross up just as you're side switching the opponent, the auto guard will be disabled and the opponent will be vulnerable. It is still possible for the opponent to guard the cross up manually, but this leaves them open to same side mix ups when proper conditioning. Fighting against Counter Burst. Counter Burst seems really powerful. It has Clash Frame on startup and can be held for guard or armor point, and this leads into an unblockable. Not to mention, there is reflection that will stun people who try to poke. On top of that, Counter Burst can be used as a guard counsel for some invisibility frames. Here are a few things to help deal with excessive Counter Burst. Number one, counter burst loses to low attack. If a player times their low attack outside of counter burst initial startup, they'll punish the counter burst while scoring a counter hit. Reflection only works on normals and not specials. This includes dashing attack, so characters like Yuzuha and Mikoto who have low dashing attack, this will also beat Reflection. Be warned, while dashing attack is strong against counterburst, it's weak against evasion. While counterburst is strong as a guard counsel, you can limit its effectiveness when using an attack that does multi hit on block, like user hush dashing medium. Here are some tips that I won't be able to make a video for, but still feel necessary to share. Bullet 1 High jumps have no startup and they also have some invisibility. Bullet 2. Back dash and high jump reduce guard gauge. Being reflected also reduce guard gauge as well. Bullet 3. Most characters have one meterless special that is air unblockable. Otherwise, all ES and supers are air unblockable besides ones that are done in the air. Bullet 4. To relaunch a knockdown opponent, players should use a low hitting counter burst, ES specials, or overdrive.